Hello, hello. It is podcast day. The Scoop Weddings Unveiled. It is I, Tim Schaus, TLS, Enter- TLS Entertainment, your premier DJ. And we've got a special guest here. Brandy will be here in a minute, but we've got a special guest coming from the Tampa Bay area. It is the Tampa Bay DJ Company, Corey Barron. And uh, the Tampa Bay DJ Company, just a quick overview, provides live mixing DJs, polished MCs, silent disco, which is crazy, live musicians, fusion DJ bands, sound production, lighting design, special effects for all events and weddings throughout Tampa, St. Pete, Clearwater, Pinellas, Lakeland, Sarasota, all over Florida, might as well be, and they perform primarily weddings and galas. Let's please welcome Corey Barron. What's up, buddy? What's going on, Tim? How you doing? Dude, it's good to be here. It, I'm so happy you're here. Um, it's been a long time coming. Yes, um, sir. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you, you know what? Um, it's been insane watching you grow your business, uh, you, you grow as a DJ. I mean, I, you were, um, I mean, kind of give me a little background of how you got to where you are today. Cause you weren't, um, it was just you or just, yeah, start from the beginning. <laughs> like this is, this is just crazy. I'll, I'll kick it back. No. Um, so I was a skating rink DJ back in the early two thousands, like 2004, five and six. And, uh, after, Graduated in high school, went to uh, to Fort Myers, really kind of got my feet wet uh, down at FGCU, just kind of, you know, spinning at frat parties and, and in college bars and doing that thing. And uh, I had a very good friend uh, named Eric who was back here in Tampa. It was when I moved back. He had hooked up with a company called Grant Hemond, mm-hmm. who at the time was like the powerhouse of the wedding DJ market, yeah. right? So they, uh, they gave me a shot, and it was awesome. And I was with them for about 10 years, just kind of, you know, getting my start, learning the ropes, really kind of getting involved within the wedding industry as a whole, and then decided it was time to fly. And uh, around that time, I had had met with my grandmother and uh, my grandfather at the kitchen table, and we were just having discussions on life and growing as an adult and, you know, being responsible, being a responsible business owner. And and, uh, one of the things that she told me was that, you know, you you never get this time back and that you need to use this time to work extremely hard so that you can play extremely hard later on. Yeah. Never look back. And uh, from that point forward, I I remember it was October 2017, I left Grant Heeman. We just kind of had a parting of ways and things doors just opened that I never could have imagined. Just sure. uh, just a number of opportunities. Uh, guys that I had met through that my grant, time at Grant Heeman um, had become like brothers to me. I'm actually one of them's a business partner for two other ventures that we're in at the moment. Okay. Um, so we have Cafe a la carte and the Gelato Cart. And both of those are, are flourishing right now. All mobile-based businesses. We kind of have a have a thing there with yeah. mobile. <laughs> All right. Mobile so, I, days, so I'm super curious. All right. So you're yeah. with uh, Grant Heeman for how long? I was there for 10 years. For 10 years. Mm-hmm. And he taught you just about everything. Just about everything. Just if, about. It, it, if for, for the type of clientele that they serviced, um, there was there's there's always kind of a, a stopping point, right? Like there's their, their, their whole thing was you're a chameleon, right? So every DJ should be interchangeable. And that just... It didn't sit with me because I'm a creative. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so just like you, right? You wanna, you wanna find ways to better serve that customer because there's always a way to get just a tad bit closer to them and then bring their party to a little bit more of a, a next level, right? And so I just kind of felt like I wasn't wasn't able to to get that while I was there. And so mm-hmm. when I went off on my own, we just basically started a whole new creative process. Yeah. And uh, and then that is what eventually turned into Tampa Bay DJ companies because I, I was getting booked out and then I'd have couples and planners and venues come to me and go, oh man, you're always booked. Yeah, well, duh. Yeah, <laughs> like, which is a great problem. Right. Have, right. You know how it is. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, so at that point I would say, okay, we'll take on a protege and see what we can do. And then uh, one of the things that, that I think kind of has truly helped build our business is that we've we've brought people on under the, the circumstances or the guys, whatever you want to call it, of helping them grow as an individual Mm -hmm. and helping them grow as a human and helping them grow as a business partner and owner. So when the guys that come in, they, they have kind of tracks that they can work with us on. Some of them will stay solely as a DJ and MC. Some of them will move into AV and special effects with us, but there's always this, conversation that we have minimum twice a year where we check in and go, okay, what's your one-year goal? What's your five-year goal? What's your 10-year goal? Okay. And if it doesn't line up with where the company's at, but it's still something that's going to be good for them long-term, 
will help them move in that direction. Because sure. we're constantly going to be bringing DJs in and out. It's just yeah, that's nature. just the nature of the beast. Yeah, exactly. So that so are I, they are they considered uh, like. Contractors or are they? I have both. So I have I have uh, W two employees that are full time, and then I also have ten ninety nine contractors. You've how many employees, full time? Between, I mean, just just within Tampa Bay DJ Company, we have four, and then we have twelve ten ninety nine contractors. Okay, gotcha. Uh, but then amongst all of our companies, I think we have like twelve employees. Sheesh. So. All right. Yeah, that's one thing that I've just been astonished with is how you went from like obviously DJ. Yep. MC and doing that to literally getting your hands into everything it seems um, because I mean obviously yeah you have an AV company yeah or I mean you you do AV we and, do AV yeah through the DJ company and it's uh, and that's not something to I mean that, that's di- that's yeah that's, that's different yeah <laughs> is it's um that's totally based on technical skill and equipment I mean it's it's training based it's you do the same thing every single time with maybe moving a couple speakers around in a different direction but sure it's it's having high quality speakers high quality microphones and high quality talent to help you set that up yeah if you don't have those things you can't be successful and, and for those listening who don't know what yeah. av means it's audio visual yeah um so that's yeah sound yeah uh, video. Yep. I, Our specialty is small to mid level. Small so to mid level. Like, so what would be? There's like five companies in Tampa that can do insane huge projects, stages yeah. and hundreds of speakers and truss installs. But like there is, I guess it wasn't worth their time, is what we found to like do these smaller like let's say hundred to three hundred or hundred to five hundred person events. Okay. And we already had tons of equipment that we had yeah. for weddings because one of my philosophies for speakers set up is I know there's a speaker arrangement for every venue, for every couple, mm-hmm. for every guest count. And I have a problem with <laughs> buying speakers. I no, just, I, I get it. It's a, it's a <laughs> DJ thing, right? We love our gear. So um, we just, we had all of this gear and I'm like, man, if it's sitting on the shelf, it's not making money. And then we started getting calls for these, you know, one-off random events that turned into, you know, two a year, three a year. Um, we actually just signed a contract with Hotel Haya in Tampa, so we're actually the in-house AV company for them, and we've got a few other those other you know uh, venues like that that are in in the works, which is great weekday business. Uh, okay, and then it also gives my guys a chance to get out to learn something new, and then gives them a chance for a weekday business as well. Okay, nice. So yeah, like I mean, tell me about the progression from all right, so DJ, yep. and then like I mean, I I feel like I just like watched this progression happen as it as it unfolded so it was dj you went off on your own yeah and i was like shit there's this new (laughs) there's this new dj out he's from grant hemond uh and he knows what he's doing and he's taking the area by storm like he's really uh going to town and um so like i i've been kind of following your 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 journey which has been amazing to watch and so you went from DJ and then you brought on, or actually, I don't know if it was, you brought on another DJ. I did. Yeah. I'm about a year, maybe even less than that. Um, uh, probably about six months after I left, I brought on a guy named Andrew Hayes, um, who is now with a group called rain. Um, he's in, he's in Brooklyn, New York. He actually left oh, wow. us officially last year and he's getting ready to tour. I mean, he was down here uh, doing Miami music week and all kinds of stuff. No kidding. So it was one of those things. Again, it was trying to figure out where people's goals lined up. And once <clears> I saw that he had, excuse me, once he had that talent and he had the drive for it, I'm like, man, we, we got to get you out of weddings and get you on this path. And yeah. It was everything we could do to do that. That's cool. So, and he's, he's taken off. So. Yeah. And then, so, and then I saw you started like building, you were kind of like building like custom facades yeah. and yep. I feel like that's taken, that's kind it's of DJ furniture is almost a standard now, which is well, crazy. yeah, yeah. Um, well, you started with the facades, yeah. and then it kind of like transformed into DJ furniture. Yep. And that, and for those of you who don't know what DJ furniture is, for all of our couples out there, it's really just like a custom DJ table. It is, in yep. a sense. Um, instead of having just a regular six foot table with a cloth over top and then like a facade in front, no, like it's customized and it's it's. Matches the wedding decor, matches wedding yeah. venue. My my thing is, it was a tall people problem because I'm six <laughs> four. <laughs> so you you know how this is. Now, I'm like, six foot. But. Oh, like, 
I, at the end of the night, I'm like, you know, I tried the kangaroo mats and the insoles and all these things. My back would just be killing me. Cause you're just bent over, bent slouched over. over yeah. So I built a, I built a DJ booth that my, you know, ergonomically was yeah. correct. It's, you know, 48 inches high or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. It fits perfect and it looks cool. And, um, you know, the, uh, I have some changes to make my prototypes. Um, you know, unfortunately guests like to set their, their drinks yes. right on top, right next to my laptop and my gear. So uh-huh. I'm going to make a little, uh, <laughs> little glass tray or divider okay. at some point to try and keep that from happening, but just slap it away. Exactly. <laughs> just slap it away. Uh, uh. Tried that before too. Then it's yeah. like one of my speakers. Oh yeah, <laughs> but man, but no, um, yeah, that, that was that was super cool. That was something that kind of came again. It, it came out of a, a comfort thing. I wanted to have something that was my height, my size. It looked cool, um, and then all of a sudden, I was getting requests, especially when COVID hit. I mean, mm-hmm. we, we had a I hired a fabricator to build a DJ booth that is now in one of the casinos. I think it's in Oregon. Um, or Washington State, but I mean, like we got calls from all over the country. No kidding, it was neat. So it was something that kept me busy during the first uh, first part of COVID. Those first like maybe month, month and a half, um, and then I started getting local orders from guys like Curate down in uh, in Fort Myers. Yeah, they had reached out about building them, and then I talked to some guys in North Carolina and Ohio. And so, are you uh, still building like? custom booths so yeah I, I am most of it's in-house stuff for us now um we have a, we hired a welder and um, i do some carpentry work but i hired a carpenter as well and basically when we get orders for certain things most of it's like bars nightclubs type of thing now okay um but all of my stuff um like my my big booth the one i've been using for the last three years is getting ready to be retired and i've basically modified everything to it's all metal everything is is all steel like um super lightweight on really good wheels okay <laughs> so, I've figured out over the last like three years of just like all the scenarios I keep finding myself in that makes it really hard to get in and out. And we've just tried to circumvent all of that. Okay. So nice. We'll have that rolling out here soon. Jeez. <laughs> all right. So then, so you, you were doing uh, facades and, and then uh, DJ furniture yep. and then all of a sudden you just blew up and here you are again doing uh, AV and now you're doing lighting and effects and you're um, you know, Cold Sparks are a big thing in this area. Big time. Um, Sarasota, Manatee, not, I mean, a little bit of Tampa. Um, you don't see too much of having to pull permits, but in Orlando, Orlando, you certainly do. The city of Tampa and Orlando are... They're cracking down. Oh, my God. it's They're they're the two worst counties, I think. I think oh, not, not county. The Orlando area, specifically around Disney, which was Reedy Creek, that was a nightmare to work with. Um City of Tampa has not been. I love the fire chief and the inspector crew. They, <laughs> shout out to them. They have made my life easier. Um, but they have a process that sure you have to go through. Yeah. It's certificates. It's training. It's um, proper gear. Having the right equipment. The right material. The right fire plan. The right mm-hmm. fire equipment. Like there's just a whole bunch of hoops. I have to go do two permits after I leave here. Oh, today, I'm sure. So. Well, and I uh, I did a wedding at the Gaylord Palms in Orlando, and yeah. they had ordered cold sparks with me and. Uh, that's when I started to, because I've never had, like here in Sarasota, I'm sure you understand, there's, you don't have to pull permits as of yet. No, nope, just watch out for the trolleys. That's it. <sighs> God, don't even get me started on that. <laughs> yeah, watch out for the damn trolleys, because uh, they will run your cold sparks <laughs> over, your, sp- your spark machines. Um, but anyway, <laughs> we digress. But yeah, so Sarasota, like Manatee, you don't really have to worry about uh, pulling permits or, you know, going through the, you know, the whole process here right now. Yep. Not, I mean, you know, I'm sure that. eventually that's going to happen. Um, but I was in Orlando and I didn't hear anything. And then like a week prior to the wedding, the coordinator's like, oh, we need you to pull a permit and do all this. And I'm so sorry. Uh, and it was going to cost you like $500 because Easily. it was so last minute. And I was like, well, that just, I'm not going to, no. Yeah, no. Nope. Because now I'm, it's, it's costing me money. Yep. Big time. Um, so I'm, I just said, I'm not, I, I re like I refunded or I just took it off the invoice. I said, Hey, we're not going to do it. Yep. No, that's sometimes that's the easiest way. And the, the problem is, is that there are people who do it right. And then there are, there are people who have gotten into this, like who are literally advertising the special effect with like children putting their hands over this stuff because mm-hmm. it's like, it's cold enough to touch. It can be, but the thing is, is there's, certain, there's chemistry, right, and, and physics sure. involved with this. And if you you shoot an ember into something like tool material or hairspray or 
Um, or I got synthetic feathers or the, the or dried anything dried floral. I mean, mm-hmm. pompous grass. That I mean, you can. Do you seize know? On that all right. So, there, quick so. story yeah. on that, and I'm sure you know where I'm going with this. There was uh, is this Mayaka city. It was it Mayaka? I don't know where it was, yeah. but um, there was. Uh, it was just a few months ago. I want to Love, say Lovelock Ranch. Why, Mama? I know exactly what you're talking yep. about. Yep. So there was there was a wedding. It was during a first dance, and I forget. Uh, Bree Watkins, I think, was the photographer. And she put out on social media kind of like a, a little reel of the, the progression of the first dance and how it was going. And then all of a sudden the cold sparks go off. But whoever, do you know who? I've heard rumors I can't say yet because I was pulled into Hillsborough County Fire about this as a consultant. Oh, okay. Because Hillsborough County now wants to put permits in place because of this little yes. incident. So what happened was during the first dance, these cold sparks go off right in front of the head table and they had like a nice little floral. Yeah, it was like a huge circle. Like yeah, a huge. Beautiful. Yeah, floral s- circle arrangement as like a backdrop of this of the head table and the cold sparks are going off but it seems like from the video and again this is just me just based off of observation it looked like the cold sparks were literally placed right underneath really really poor placement it was bad judgment it and it was, was like dried floral directly into it it wasn't even like a close call scenario <laughs> like usually you want just, your cold sparks forward so yes that you help frame the shot i mean right there's, there's a there's a, an art to setting these things but too, that's but common this, sense this, yeah well there was a lack of it that day <laughs> um yeah I don't, I don't know who it is we sent out a couple messages because we heard from various planners that it was this person or that person so we just said, what hey, it, I mean, I guess you could just reach out to Bree. Yeah, I, honestly, that's probably the easiest way to do it. So I'm, I'm sure the fire chief or deputy chief has already done that. And we're trying to stay. I don't want to lose this part of my business. So we're basically yeah. consulting from a safety standpoint. Sure. To go, this was really stupid. And this person should be you know, reprimanded, like not the entire right, yeah. people. Yeah. <laughs> and and so just oh. to continue with that story. Yeah. So the cold sparks were placed right underneath this floral arrangement and the entire floral arrangement, which is indoor inside this barn, yep. uh, caught on fire during the first dance. And looking at it from the photos, like you're like, holy cow, that's insane. But it was also like really cool shots. Um, and the bride and groom were just like, you could just see them like looking back and they didn't move. They just kept dancing. Luckily, they, they went into action and the, the barn doors, they opened the barn doors and pulled everything out. They yeah. got it extinguished, I'm assuming. Uh, so there were wedding guests that dragged it out. Oh. The, the guy who shot the cold sparks ended up packing and rolling immediately. So he wasn't even the DJ. He was no. just separate. So from, from, again, from what we're understanding, the DJ company didn't have them. They third partied them in. And oh whoever boy. shot it just didn't know what they were doing. But, I mean, it stinks for the venue because, I mean, this, remember, this is, this is a barn, right? Yeah. This is agritourism. There are no sprinklers. There may or may not be exit signs or fire extinguishers, <laughs> things of these natures around there, which are supposed to have. Ooh. So, I mean, this could have gone really bad. Yeah. So I, that's, that's you know, from a cold spark perspective, that's the kind of training we had to do with, with the fire marshals and with the fire inspectors is like identifying these types of things. So that's one of the parts of our business that's really taken off in the last two years. Right. We went out, we spent like 30 grand on, on the proper equipment, the stuff that you know, like Justin Bieber has on tour. Yeah. We got the same stuff in the warehouse. <laughs> we have a blast with it. It's, it's crazy, but there's a certain level of respect too. And so that's, that's part of the reason I think it's taken off so well. Yeah. We have the stuff that can basically go anywhere. I mean, the cold spark effects are an amazing effect. Um, you see the stuff that's coming out. Uh, there's like, you can make a tornado of fire with some. No, new no. <laughs> I saw that and I'm just yeah. like fire. No, I mean, exactly. yeah. that's, uh, yeah. are you going to get into that? Probably. Yeah, I mean, it depends on the <laughs> stage work, I guess. I, so yeah, it depend, yeah. depends on the venue, not for weddings. That's but awesome. yeah, cold sparks are awesome for, uh, for like, like the grand introduction, the first dance, like the last dance heightens the moment. Right. It really does. And especially when the guests aren't aware of it. They're like, holy cow. Well, cause uh, this was used, it, it, it's mimicking a, a firework effect called a GURB, right? And so okay. that was only for the lux of the lux weddings. Okay. Right? If you were in Mexico and all of your guests are flown in and you're, you know, the, the highest of the high end resorts, you would have those go off as like, you know, ending the night or ending your first dance, but thousands of dollars to do that. 
and That's it was insane. just yeah and so now it's like okay for for a thousand bucks you can shoot them off five times a night you know with, yeah. with permitting and with everything else i mean it's it stinks because it's kind of lost the luster because it's like now it's like okay everybody has it yeah kind of yeah thing. um but yeah that was something that was really reserved for like the ultra rich weddings like That's it was yeah in, in the past which is which is cool because you're able to bring that to your local clientele but again it's, it's starting to lose the luster now so yeah now we got to add six cold sparks or right yeah it, <laughs> but there's another effect that's out there and you also need a permit for this which i learned at the gaylord palms wedding that i did um co2 cannons do you have co2 cannons i didn't know they required you to use a permit for that yep they no. they required a permit at the Gaylord Palms. I'm have you been at the Gaylord Palms? I have not been at the Gaylord. Yet. Well, that's. Um, I typically stay clear of like the Orlando corridor. I go like celebration back. Okay. Uh, yeah, I um I well this was a third the third wedding of this family, and so like I did the yeah so they and uh, they're like do you travel I'm like yeah sure well, I'll go to Orlando and it was 300, 300 guests nice. which you don't see very at least I don't see very often down here in Sarasota yeah. like. There's not many venues that can hold that. No, this way. no. Uh, I mean the Ritz. Yeah. Which I've done a 300 guest wedding there, um, but yeah. So there's 300 guests. It was a huge ballroom, and that's where I needed the um, the permits and everything. And it was just so late in the game. I was like, no, there's no point. I'm not going to spend f whatever the amount of money it was because it was going to cost more than what I rented them out. That's crazy. And um, and so yeah, they told me the planner told me that. They still needed to get permits for the CO2 cannons, and so they used the CO2 cannons. And I want you have CO2 cannons, yeah, right? Yeah, we have we have the jets and the handhelds. So, all right. So I'm I'm very intrigued by these, but I just don't know how to sell them, to upsell them, or to even use them. And like I I, I just feel like it's a very clubby thing, which is really cool. Yep. Um, but so in this in this case for the for the wedding that I did, they had them set up for the grand entrance. Perfect. And so they had two. Uh, they had two on the floor. So the the actual jets, right? The, the jets, that yeah, that yep. were just stationed on the floor. Yep. And then they just went off. Um, pretty high, actually. Yeah, they go like 25, 30 feet. Yeah. Um, and I, I mean, that's. I don't really know how that works for like photo or I mean or video. Uh, I haven't seen the photos or videos from it yet. It has to be perfectly timed. Because yeah. It dissipates so quick. Right. But for. For like for the CO two cannons, like the what what are they? The, the handheld ones. Yeah, the handheld. Yeah, so we use club cannon. Okay. Those are like they they make the best lines, like the actual tubes. Okay. In anywhere, like sure. I, we bought stuff from China, it's all in the garbage. Yeah. Like oh, we I'm sure. Only buy the stuff from club cannon now because it's solid. Um. So the handheld ones are. I mean, you can use them for anything. I mean, to, to height any moment is definitely a club effect. The reason I got into them is I went to a chain smoker concert in mm -hmm. Vegas and it was like every five minutes there was a huge <laughs> drop and CO2 went off. And I'm like, man, this would be awesome at a wedding. Okay. <laughs> so, and so we, we bought our first one. We got back and it sold instant. I sold it for like 300 bucks. That no what I was it. doing. I now, how many times does it, do you have them go off? Is it Depends on how much CO2 you want to drag in. Okay. So, so the, we, we have, like, we bought seven or eight of these, like, 20-pound CO2 siphon tanks. Okay. And so we actually own them. So we just take them down the street from our warehouse and get them filled. Um, and, and then we bought the good guns and the good hoses for those. And so, I mean, it, it depends if, um, like, like, my favorite thing to do right now, if a client's got the budget for it, is his and hers. So I have a black and a white club cannon and i'll put two tanks behind the dj booth and run them 15 foot lines out and then they both get and i'll play turn down for what or something with uh -huh. a crazy drop in it and then always grab the photographer videographer get them of course place, right no um they're still a little scared i feel like some some of the videographers photographers like they have no like they're afraid that like, the gas is gonna like sure. mess up their cameras and stuff so they they tend to back off a little bit um but the fo the photo has been awesome and, and 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 the video content especially if you can grab some quick stuff for reels has been great I'm, I'm not super active on social media but i've got backlogs of stuff i need to post about yeah. this it just brings that if if a couple really wants that party element they like, like that, club know, atmosphere. They want that club atmosphere they want that rager like that's that's one of the easy ways to get it yeah done. All right, because I know, like, when you're at a club, obviously, like, when they go off, yep. it's really cool, oh, yeah. and it cools you off. <laughs> I, 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 I pitch them to all of my summertime so, clients okay, <laughs> for that's that fair. exact reason. I'm like, yeah. if you're outside, oh, my gosh, immediate 20-degree drop for, like, yeah. 10 seconds. Yeah, and you'll feel great. Yep. Um, yeah, so how do you upsell them? Because I, I've, I've just been so – like, I'm, I'm intrigued by them, but I just don't know – like, I can see – I can see – 
cold spark effects and yep. how those can enhance, you know, uh, a, a first dance or a grand entrance and so forth. But the CO2 cannons, uh, yeah, for sure. No, um, so we, we bought the jets because of the issues we were running into with cold sparks. So we wanted to have an alternative that didn't require a permit that we could shoot inside or outside. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they were super cool. They make light up versions of the jets now too. I'm not a big fan of them. I think they're kind of a weak color. Like this, it doesn't, doesn't the photograph well, doesn't video yeah. well. So I didn't want to waste the extra money on that. I could put an up light behind there if I wanted to. Um, but so we bought the jets for that, and then we bought the jets for stationary stuff, like if we were going to be like up on a riser, we have our fusion band, things like that, yep. um, where the couple can aim the gun and hold it. It's a little more interactive. The jets were more of like that concert style yep. you know, blast, right? So we, we wanted two different, essentially, styles of effects with it. So if I'm talking to a client and they really want that club experience and they're spending money on a riser and a fusion band and all these extras, then that's why I can come in and pitch those and go, okay, well, this, this you know, here's a video of it, right? And, like, this is the experience and this is the songs maybe that we would pair it up with. The night. Okay. And if it seems like it's a good fit for what they want to do production-wise, then it's an easy sell. Yeah. Um, it's not not for everybody, right? right. It's going to be those Ritz Carlton, Ritz Carlton clients, the big, big room, two, three hundred people weddings. That's where those things are going to sure. Stay. But CO2 is for, I mean, we've had 40 person weddings and the couple still want them just because <laughs> they've seen them and they love it and they can handhold it. And it's just, it's a great, if it's a great spot if you're going to train, change the vibe, right? Like right. if you're done with cake cutting, if you've been doing cake cutting anymore for right. bouquet yeah. and gutter toss and you're kind of like approaching that, like that peak hour, that after party hour, like that's just, you know, if you can't use cold sparks, that that's a notch up. So, like, how do you incorporate that into your timeline? Because I feel like that's something that you have to coordinate with the couple, exactly, with the photographer and the videographer. At least for the cold sparks, yep. you know exactly when. Like, all right, so I'm going to have these go off during the grand entrance, and I will go and let the photographer and the videographers know, like, hey, grand entrance when the bride and groom comes in. They're going to go off at this particular time, yep. and then we're going to go straight in the first dance. And they're going to go off again at this particular time, so they can be ready. So I want them to make sure that they're in a good spot for photo and video. With the CO2, I feel like it's most most of the time during like the party peak hour. Yep, I always tell the couple, planner, venue um, specifically, and then of course your photographers, your creative vendors. Um, there's about a 30 minute window. And I'll say, hey, when we're approaching this, I'll kind of feel it out, and I'll let you guys know as soon as I know, like, okay, hey, we're, we're here. Like, the party's at that level. Let's go ahead and get them out. And I'll, I'll get everything ready on my end, and then usually I'll just shout out the couple. But they're both on the dance floor. I'll grab the mic and, like, bring them over real quick. Okay. There's been a few couples that, um, and I'll do this for everybody, but just, you know, if the, the, you get those couples that are just awesome, right? Uh -huh. They follow your process to a T, and they're super easy, and, like, they, they – you know, your, your, your deliverable to them is just, just going to be easy because of how nice and kind they've been and they love their vendors and they're just excited. Sometimes I'll just throw it in and I'll just bring it with me. Okay. And just, just knowing that it's going to get a crazy reaction from their guests, just based on what I'm seeing on their playlists and how they've interacted yeah. with us. And, and, you know, so when, when you find those moments and you find those couples, it's really, it's, it's a much easier process to work in after you've done it a couple of times, but it, it usually it's a lot of it's done on feel. Okay. And do you need, I mean, is it easy setup or like, do you have something like, a do wrench. you, a, a wrench, <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you need a wrench and a washer Okay. outside you, your hose, your gun, you have a wrench. So you basically have everything set up prior and then yep. it's just ready to go. And when you're ready, you don't need to like, again, with the cold sparks, you have to, you have to warm them up and get them all situated and timed. You need a pressurized tank. That's, that's and then the all you have to do is press go. And that's it. Yep. So we we have a we have Pelican cases. We've packed all of our guns, our hoses, our tubes, our backup. Yep. Everything is in there. And it's, um, I mean, it's it's a two minute setup tops. Okay. Like the first time you do it. Yeah. Just because you're scared, you want to blow your face off. Right. The tank. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, there's also myths out there that like if you release the nozzle the wrong way, the tank's gonna like fly off like a torpedo. <laughs> oh, I'm like, it's the, the tank weighs 40 pounds when it's full. Like it's not going anywhere. Holy cow. So, All right. Um, but yeah, I use 20 pound tanks and I have linkages um, that you can buy through Club Clean and that you can link multiple tanks together if you want it to last, you know, longer than 15, 20 seconds. We used to bring in 50 pound tanks. They're yeah. a nightmare. Oh, they're I'm nightmare sure. To drag out. They're 140 pounds full. Like they're just, it's not, it wasn't worth it to me. And then you got to hide the stupid thing. Right. So yeah. 20 pound tanks, you stick them under a table. Like, and then, yeah, when you're feeling that and you call the, the couple up to exactly. the, the DJ booth, you just hand it over. Yep. And, and they're, and they're excited too. Oh, right? sure. And they bought this, like that, they, they can't wait for that. Moment. Yeah. Like, you can, you can, they, <laughs> the brides are so giddy. They're super smiling. Like, Oh my God, I've been waiting for this all night type of a thing. And so. of course, then you get on the mic and you hype oh, everybody hype up. up. Yeah, exactly. And then you tell them, wait for the drop. And then once the drop 
Exactly. It's yep. boom. That's it. Nice All right. and easy. All right. So CO two cannons. CO two cannons are a move. I love them. They're they're super fun. They're easy. They don't they don't make anybody mad venue wise, and they come out with some great photo and video. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, you're selling me on them. I'm a big fan. <laughs> I'll let you borrow them sometime. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. I'll try them out. Take one out for a test drive. <laughs> keep it away from the trolley. So. Oh, you. <laughs> That yeah. damn trolley needs to stay away. Yep. Um, so, uh, so all right. So you got the CO2. Did you ever get into the dancing on the cloud effect? Yeah, we use. Um, you we do use, that. You we, do that. Yeah, we use the on tour ice machine. Okay. Yeah, I'm a big fan of that one. Okay. And but you but you have to have somebody else on site. Do you ever have like? Nope, you, I can run it. So the on tour ice machine is is super simple. It's got the longest hose on the market. Um, we modified ours a little bit. We changed the hose material out, changed the caster wheels out, um, but. It's uh, as long as you've got plenty of power for those machines, I can park it right next to the DJ booth and it's one button and I can control it from right, right next to the table. It's, they make the ones like the little bucket machines that a lot of DJs use cause you can get them from China now. Yeah. Um, and you have to have two of those things. You got to have people moving them around and stuff like that. Cause there's no hose on them. So with this, I can just pick it up and move it whichever direction I need it to. But okay. the secret is tell the venues to turn the AC off. If there's no uh, air movement. Oh yeah. Room, because it'll. Yeah. There's no air movement. It's perfect. Okay. Yep. That makes sense. And I've, again, I've looked into that. And again, I haven't seen, um, I haven't seen, um, like I, I, I tried to book them and sell them myself. We got Brandy here. Brandy What's decided. Up, Brandy? You're over there, Brandy. Woohoo! You get nice to me. Yeah. Nice to meet me. You, you've just, you just missed so much. So, I can't wait for the replay. So. Yeah, I feel like I've been talking to Brandy all morning because I was re-listening to <laughs> one today, just cracking up, listening to you talk about music. So, you were uh, listening to which one? Episode fourteen point one. Oh. It was about it was about uh, music. It was music picture of the wedding. Yeah, music oh, picture of the wedding. Yeah. But right now we're talking about dancing on the cloud. The dancing. Oh. We're actually talking about all the effects. All the effects. All, all the effects. effects. All the fun I'm super things. excited for the effects. Yeah. So, um, but right now we're so we'll get you we'll get you in. Um, nice. Uh, dancing on the cloud effect. So I, I, a few years, well, a couple of years ago, I was looking into purchasing or investing into the dancing on the cloud and I was pushing it to clients. Nobody was, was, was doing it. It's a super Disney effect. It's like, that's how my wife calls it. So like, that's, that's the clientele that buys that the most. And so you're selling it kind of based on a Disney model, I feel like for the most times. Okay. okay. But it has to be inside. That's what I was going to say. They've tried, uh, when I was at the Bishop, they tried doing nope. it at the Bishop. And the guy was like, oh, yeah, it's too cold outside. No, and I was cold like, is great. I don't. I don't <laughs> cold is fantastic. The colder like, it is, the I don't it understand this. Like, it was like, it sputtered. And I'm like, well, that was a That's waste. That's because you didn't have enough power or didn't have enough water. Yeah. And we were outside. It's just, so th it's the different. whole. It just floats away, so right? Dancing on a cloud, there's two ways to do it, right? Just to, for a quick chemistry lesson. You have dry ice and hot water, which is the first way. It's just like the huge nice. puffy clouds. They're super yep. billowy, but you get like two minutes tops. Like you only you only have this, if you got <laughs> yeah. hot water and ice, you only get it for as long as you got hot water and ice. And the other one is the the oil based machines where you have like oil and an, and an agitator and and distilled water, and then that creates its own system that creates the the fog. But that fog can lift, and that's what will piss off all the hotels. I was gonna say oh. that's, that's what will if it gets into the air ducts. And it's, so which it's, one do you use? I, so we have both versions, <laughs> but I, I, I primarily use the dry ice version. It's a little more expensive to run, but the photo effect is incredible. Yeah, the photo effect is really cool, and but yeah, it's a very Disney effect. Yep. But I also like I've noticed that it's, um, I w the only time I've ever had any, I, I just stopped offering it. Now, luckily, sure. I didn't invest into it, um, for me. Uh, you need it, to call me. Yeah, I will. Um, but. Uh, I noticed that it was mostly like the Hispanic weddings or like Quince the quinceañeras are time. huge. Quinceañeras are massive with it. Um, yeah. And I don't, we don't do a ton of quinceañeras, but um, the, the couple that. I choose not to. Yep. Yeah. I mean, there, it's just like, <laughs> it's just like a wedding. It's no, more, it's, it's like more pressure like, sometimes. Yep. Yeah. It, is, it is just. No se habla español. Yes. Hablo un poquito en escuela para cuatro años, but no, no me gusta quince. Bueno. So. so <laughs> <laughs> but no, I just there's there's too much. There's yeah. like 400 people, and you actually don't know because people come and go. There could be 600. Oh yeah, no, it's too it's, much. It's a lot. So yeah, you know, we 
we like to use those in coordinated moments. Again, it's you're you're working with that creative team. Get your photo, your video out there. Yep. You're going to have planner with the cell phone rocking ready to go. Your assistant with the cell phone ready to go, and then just trying to choreograph that all together. And they they look great with cold sparks indoors. Oh like sure, that's that's the move. Like that's usually the one that we try to sell the most, just because if if they love the Disney effect anyway, just you're adding sparkle. Yeah, right now. and and also with that, I've again I try for me personally, I. Just say it. It just feels like a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It's and production. It, it is a production. And you have to bring I, extra I do staff, have a right? team, um, yep. but I feel like, I don't know. You would it, rather have them out DJing. I would rather have them that. out DJing and, and creating that, that party atmosphere than coming and just running the... the, the um, the special effects. The special effects. But what and if you had someone who was only interested in like creating these? Sure, that's special exactly what we like did. Like one yeah. person, that dedicated is just, people to yeah. do that. That's yeah. fair. Yeah. But I also, I'm like, all right, so now I have to go out and buy the dry ice, <laughs> and I have to make sure I have everything ready. And it's, you send them. You just you? keyed in on something right there, making sure that you have dry ice available on a Saturday or a Sunday. Because Publix does not always carry a dry ice. <laughs> yeah. Do you doesn't get it? exist anymore. No, yep. we, we actually have we have a, a specific packing and shipping company in St. Pete. This guy that we have a good relationship <laughs> with. And they, they work with us. But I have to put my orders in usually pretty well in advance. It's, it's not a pop up thing like a client calls me yep. on Friday and goes, Hey, we want dry ice for Sunday. Oops, it's sorry. probably not gonna yeah. happen. We can and go to Publix and check it out, but Yeah, exactly. I'll let you know if and, you get lucky. Yeah. And getting it from your person is like it's like they're packing peanuts. It's not like that's what they carry. Yeah, no, no. It's like, well, this this place specifically does like random ass shipping. Like, it's like if you so they <laughs> always have dry they, ice they, for whatever. Most reason. of the time, they have they actually have their own production facility somewhere in Largo that is undisclosed to us. But like, so they can make it in, <laughs> in massive blocks um, nice. and pellets. So, yeah, from a dryest perspective, like the best thing to have is those little teeny tiny pellets, the ones that are pre done. Yeah, like that's that surface area to water to just makes it makes the cloud just. Beautiful. <laughs> so, I gotta yeah. say, personally, I'm not a fan of the cloud. The cloud? I mean, it, it is yeah. a cool effect. I mean, it's a cool effect. It looks good, but I personally wouldn't want. I don't. I would. Cloud. I don't ever see it. Pers. I mean, especially it's like with other with other DJ companies. I, I don't ever see it at, um, like high end venues. For some reason, I see that's the only place we do it in Tampa. It's it's only the high end stuff on the Maybe beaches. Maybe it's a Tampa or, thing. It yeah. might it could it be. might just be a bigger market like a like Probably. a metro metropolitan style market. We're seeing it steadily drift away though. It's it's before it was every weekend and now it's like once or twice a month. So which of the cold, like which of the effects uh, is it the CO two cannons? I feel like those are going off right now. Yeah, CO see, I, I had to guess everything comes because CO two is not and this is not new. Like this right. has been it's around. Been it's out, been out. It's been in clubs. It's they're like oh, that. what's the CO two cannon? The handheld ones. The handheld. Yeah, like, but what effect air. does it give you? Night club. Nightclub, yeah. Just, oh, instant, now that you just took me drop. back to like my twenty. Right, exactly. Yeah. Bingo. Yep. Yeah, like Cabo, the, and then right they just there, the rock. DJ used to hit the button and, and it, it goes, would go. Yeah, exactly, and it cools you off. Yep. Yeah. So they have handheld. They have okay. they have the jets that go straight up or out. Yep, the station. And then you also have the handhelds, which yeah. he has both. Yep. Um, and now he that was, I think I could get into. See, like, but I was like trying to figure out like how do you. Isn't her CO two guns? Yeah, like how do you like upsell it? Because obviously, like with Cold Spark effects, it's great. It is like I can see how that would work for intro, yeah, um, for uh, first dance and so forth. And I was the CO two cans is more of a party vibe. Yep. Yeah, um, that's 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 the sound off. Like we he, are kicking it into a new gear. Yep. And this is the vibe. Like stop the BS. Yep. This is it's going vibe. Down. And and that one song that you're like, this will set the tone for the rest of the next two hours because party vibe. Well, I don't happening. know if it's going to be two hours because usually a I party mean, is only two hours. If um, you plan it right, well, after parties are big now. <laughs> yeah, like if you plan it right, you could set the tone and be like, okay, let's get all the stuff out of the way, do all the preliminaries, get all that done. Like if that's the vibe you're going for, you do all the like oh, sure. niceties, and then you're like, all right, we're done eating dinner. We've done all the things. Great. <laughs> <laughs> and his and hers or whatever you and your partner co2 that sets it off lights change lights go, yeah. and it's just balls to the wall but co2 also powers our confetti in our co in our uh see streamers. now you, you have could con do the, the, yeah. confetti with no. the co2 no see yep. you yes. are a venue's worst <laughs> yes. nightmare now. wait no do so that. here's what we do 
we sell a cleanup service. <laughs> yep. so this guy, of course literally, you. I've got I've got my my shop vac and I leaf leaf blower. It's the yeah. easiest thing for a confetti. I just oh, blow sure. it to a corner, then suck it right up in the vacuum, and we're out we're out the door in twenty minutes. Yeah. I want that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Batter, battery <laughs> I want the powered CO2 everything. Yeah. With I want the, it with the confetti. Like yep. like you should have the confetti. I we got this. Yes, it's, do it's, all that. We're, we're trying to like basically build the night, right? Almost like right? a concert or a club yeah. or something like this. So it's yes. like okay, you've got your your grand special effects. The cold sparks go off for the introductions. You got mm -hmm. your crowd for the first dance with the cold sparks. You shoot yeah. cold sparks to kick off the night. Then you're building and you again turn down for what yellow wolf. See, all right, yeah. now you're just okay. adding so, so much more stress onto my okay. life exactly. because. <laughs> I'm just trying to make sure that I, staff, you're just staff. making sure that I, I can just start the introductions without messing up. That's, and th then I have to like make sure that the cold sparks go off and make sure I don't forget to press the, you know, make yep. sure, make sure that I press the button at the right time. Press the button. The Tim used to let me press the button. See, I can well, yeah, be a presser I mean, button person. Yeah. But I remember just to kind of like, I know the vibe that Corey brings from a experience side. Have you ever been to a party that he DJ'd? Oh, no. Which one was this? Was this this was party? at the Vinoy at the Nace. Oh, boy. Okay, so I'm taking us back probably what? This is 20, years? I think this was 2016. Before you went on your own? Yeah, I was yeah. at Grand Heman then, yeah. So, this is what the experience was. First of all, NACE, great organization. They throw a hell of a Christmas party. Like, I don't know if they still do. I haven't gone to one since. But, because um, I don't want to be disappointed. It's been a little while. Okay. Yeah. So, we're gonna bring it back, we are at the Vinoy. Everything's about, like, it's all ice. It's all, like, winter wonderland mm -hmm. theme. Um, Ala was there when... You know, mm -hmm. rest in peace rest to Allah. Oh, yeah. uh, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Allah from, and she had her uh, tipsy cakes. Those they had a gelato fire. machine. They had a coffee machine. They had the bar was we completely open. Yes. <laughs> they had a whole band. And this is for industry professionals. This yep. was not for anybody else. They had a whole entire band. They had dinner. We had the whole entire Vinoy. Photo the, ops. Yeah, it was, it was, bars. like, there was, like, icicles falling from the freaking ceiling and i'm like i don't know how that's happening and light lighting effects it was biz like out, out off the chain so then they're like we need to like stop like people are like it's time to be done mm -hmm. we're like but we don't want to <laughs> like we're not doing that next thing i hear is there's an after party downstairs in the basement and i was like what where are we going? And Corey has disappeared at this point. Yes. Uh, yes. So we go downstairs, and it is the tiniest little, like, maybe seven ta bistro like tables. Speakeasy. Yeah, it was very speakeasy, very small. The bar was all the way in the back. And then there's, like, this little, like, castle-looking opening. Like, it's oval opening like a castle, and it's just a little tiny opening you can slide in. He's all set up. Mm -hmm. And he's, like, DJing through, like, this little window thing at us. It's it's open. It's all brick. Sure. And we tore that that place down like we there were broken dishes there were oh people dancing on tables <laughs> there, there was, was there was there were so people who were removed by the hotel like oh, it, it was, was great. great and i have never in my whole entire life been a guest at an event where i felt so heard musically <laughs> like, i was like High five. this guy who is he he's amazing he could, I could DJ for, I'm just going to pay him to follow me around with music. Like yeah. this is, it was, I was one of the ones that was last to leave. I was not escorted out. I did no, not break anything. No, Brandy was not escorted, I'm gonna, for the record. But yeah. I was throwing down. Like I danced, I almost was like, I don't know how I'm going to drive home after this. Right. You're like, so it, was high. Like, it was like 3 30 in the yeah, morning 34 o'clock in we the morning we went as late as the hotel would allow <laughs> and, and even after they kept yeah. saying we were like just one more just one more and it was yeah, one more song it was incredible so um i know from a guest experience that that is the vibe that you bring and so i can appreciate the cannons i can appreciate yeah. the co2 and Thank i know right. i feel like i could imagine how that would go down at an event with you just we, because we that's the vibe. That's it. We, that's try, trying to set a vibe. Again, it's like, it's what what can we bring in that just accentuates the moment? Yeah. yeah. Like, no, it's like a build up for sure. It is. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Because I'm like, I don't want them to leave going like, okay, that was a cool wedding. I'm like, no, no, no. That was the best wedding your yeah. guests have ever been to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or, or at least top five. I'm good with top five. And what so do you like, feel like the key is to that? Because, you know, I mean, how long have you been DJing? Oh, God. How many years? 2004. Really? So almost wow. 20 years. That was a skating rink time frame. Yeah. So almost 20 years. How old are you? 
34. I'll be 35 on Friday. Oh, wow. Oh, happy, happy early birthday. birthday. You're you. still younger, both of you are whatever. Um, you've got 10 <laughs> years in, right? So in that experience of the extra 10 years in comparison, like what do you feel? Yeah, because I started in 14. Yeah, yeah, so a 10-year difference. Yeah, exactly. So what do you feel sets that apart and makes you that DJ that I just talked about being like, I wherever you're at, I want to be there. That's, that's a, I mean, I honestly, I think it comes down to it's prep and then crowd reading. Right. And like, uh, 100% that's, agree. That's what I was going to, um, that, those are the only, yeah. I mean, from, from a DJ perspective, that's really, I mean, I spent a lot of time listening to podcasts. I've got mentors from other DJ companies from all over the markets. And mm-hmm. I, I try to find if there's different things working in Jersey, New York, or working mm-hmm. in the Carolinas mm-hmm. or working in California and go, are they ahead of us? Or are they behind us? Yeah. What's what's going to work? And well, like I'm in episode 14, you guys were talking about the uh, that that dance set right before dinner, drives yes. me nuts. Oh, you uh, don't like in it? Jersey, me nuts. But a lot of my destination clients are coming from there, so I've had to start working yep. that. Into but isn't these it things. fun though? No, it's nerve wracking no. because oh. I'm like, okay, remember <laughs> you said shoot your shot, right? Like I don't want to, I don't want to <laughs> shoot that shot for 15 minutes before dinner. I need, I need these people. They've got. You need them meals. to anticipate. Like I, I need, exactly. I want to build in an intentional lull and through dinner time. Do something evergreen and cool and give them a different dinner experience that they've had like other yeah. weddings. But I, I need them to come back. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, and that's really? the thing. Like, you can. Yeah. Floor, CO2 sucks. I get that. <laughs> so, I get that. But, you know, it, now going back to that as far as like having a dance set before dinner, um, I, I don't I'm, Do you know, you know Nick Spinelli? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, I listen to all of his podcasts and his, his streaming, like, Dude is awesome. Yep. Um, and he's also an Eagles fan. So there he's from go. Philly. Fly, Eagles yep. fly. That's right. <laughs> um, <laughs> I but say it I, love I you. you know, I like his his thought process on it because uh, you know, he'll do a dance set for it's like fifteen minutes right before dinner. Yep. Um I mean obviously the transition's a little weird, but it gives you an idea of what people like you know, what to expect for later in the evening. Yeah. Yep. And you or you can also like cater to the older guests at that time. Big time. And, oh. It's, and it's so, a shot to do that, for sure. Yeah, so it's a shot to gotcha. cater to the older guests. you know guests. they're leaving after dinner Sh- and cake. Well, cake, maybe. Cake and coffee. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, grandma surprises <laughs> you sometimes. Yeah. 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 Well. Grandma's well. Aunt Betty will be there. She'll be. Yeah. She will. <laughs> you have an aunt. Yeah. Um, so I like, you know, I do like the idea of it, but then it's like, yeah, then it's like, all right, well, now we got to get you all seated. Yep. Um, and that's going to take a, a few minutes, and you have to bring the, the vibe down. Um, so which I, is I just at the end of dinner. So rather than doing that that fifteen minute shot before, I anticipate and time out dinner. And like, it usually makes the photographers really nervous because like I'll you know have like a little vendor powwow thing. I'm like, hey, I'm gonna go back up and like start getting them ready. I'm oh yeah, like, I'm not doing right. Yeah. right now <laughs> other than start to prime the guests. So yeah. I'm like, I'm like, yeah. we're not cutting the cake. I'm not doing toaster speeches. If they want to do anything, I'll come get you. But exactly, I go back up, and that's when I work in like. Mariah Carey, or mm-hmm. Phil Collins. I want to start see if the tables are doing the drum things, like you know, playing in the air oh. tonight, right? And if I see that, I'm like, oh, cool, we got a party crowd. If I don't see that, I go, oh crap, we, we, gotta, we got we got twenty minutes. <laughs> I got to dig deep tonight. Yeah. So in that essence, you're like, okay, this is gonna be a really rough night. Like you're no, like not finding out. be rough. It's just like you have to Honestly, pull out all it's the a strings. Pretty good gauge. It's it's not bad. The, <laughs> okay. the ones where I don't see the response for, I'm like, oh man, okay, like yeah, no, I'm digging deep, and it's still like, but it gives you time to hype yourself up like okay yep. i know i'm gonna have to like go in a bit differently and harder yeah, than i would know yeah. yeah and it's funny yeah. um you had mentioned you know i make sure i talk to all the the, the photographers and videographers let them know what's going on I want to know who these photographers and videographers are working with because they are so nervous They're that we're so going to do something without them. <laughs> Maybe They're like, like, I hope it just chill. takes one wedding for I them. Mean, I mean, gun shy. Yeah. I will I, I, say, DJs yeah. have gone off and just, oh, we're cutting cake. And I'm like, what the fuck? What's going on? Yep. Hold on. Stop it. Yep. It's because we run into, as a planner, not planner, retired, whatever, um, we run into those that just don't communicate the way that they should communicate. So we're always on edge because we have to be a part and make sure because that photo can only be done once. That video can only be done once. you got to set it up ahead of time as the planner. Do your research on entertainment companies. Well, yes. sometimes we <laughs> don't get best. to decide. Do I, your I know. research. Well, I know. And I talk. Talk. Cake cuttings <laughs> are now what we call, and I'm going to use a, a Brittany Egan's term, she calls it an understated cake cutting. And I love it because understated. it's like. 
she just lets the photographer take them off. Oh the yeah, side love that. Ready, oh, and yeah. there's no disruption to yep. the dance floor yeah, whatsoever. Exactly. Yep. I, I do um, see I that do more like that. more often. My favorite. Oh, yeah. I'm like. Oh. I do like that intimate. I'm like moment they're cutting too. the cake over there. We're gonna party. Exactly. <laughs> like Literally. you don't even have to say anybody's cutting the cake. You're like, oh, they cut the cake. Yep. Here's your piece. Go mm-hmm. ahead. Gotcha. <laughs> exactly. Yep. I do like that. So I think that a lot of what is happening too in the industry is like people have all these ways of like iPhoning it and all this other stuff. So that's got to be frustrating and detrimental. But oh, how a- do you AI will be a whole nother podcast topic. I know. <laughs> I just like, got back from a conference talking about that and what they can do now is terrifying from a yeah, DJ perspective. It is, so. but they can't heard... read a crowd though. That's the big no. no. They can. <laughs> how? <laughs> but here's we'll the thing. Have it on I, oh boy. We'll I come hear, back. We'll talk about AI. That'll be a whole thing. Well, I, I heard, I saw somebody post something about AI now that you say that. It's like, if you don't learn it, it will learn you. Like, if you don't learn it and master it and get ahead of it, Imagine it, it, going it will your Spotify replace you. Right now. And it picks up every single wedding guest's favorite songs, top five, within seconds, and then builds a playlist off of that, and then just rips it. Oh. That's like, that's like the first step in. <laughs> What's even crazier is they said, Silence. okay, I was like, they said, well, like, what, what keeps you from like not being replaced? I was like, oh, it's CMC work. If it's not that, they're like, okay, give me a second. Repeat Shut the, the alphabet. Front door. Repeat the alphabet. Say these couple of things. They recorded it and then put it in AI. It used my voice and made all the wedding announcements. Done. It's crazy. Like that's what's on the doorstep right now. That's not good. Yeah, but, but you they still can't have mix to give. Like y'all can. No, but they can. St- they still need to figure out. Like, I mean, you have to input oh, yeah, all sure. the information. Yeah, I mean, so that's I mean, that's, I that's what's holding the Don't right do now. that. Don't yeah. don't try to replace your DJ with <laughs> no. AI. It's it a yet. bad idea. Yeah. No. Don't do that. Yeah, all right, so um, yeah, we're gonna get away from that one right now because that's yeah, like you said, we're gonna go down a rabbit hole. Yep. Um, but we're gonna go down another rabbit hole. Uh oh. Um and. This one I have an issue with with planners. Ooh, oh, God. my favorite. You know where I'm going. Oh, jeez. My favorite. Uh-huh. And I have I love I have the planners beef. out there. And he ain't talking about me, just so y'all know. No. I ain't never put. First planner twice removed over here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, always. So, all right. How often are you put in a damn corner? Nobody puts Tim in a corner. <laughs> Nobody puts Timmy in a corner. No. That's uh, my motto. No. I don't put Timmy in a corner ever. This is so what what I've done with planners, um, especially with this as of late, is I tell them you can put me in a coat closet if you want to, however my sound cannot go there. Right. Right? Because all of the cans of worms that open up for microphone feedback to Grandmas and aunts and uncles are pissed off because it's too loud. All these things all come from yep. our sound setup. So I'm like, if I can at least see the dance floor, I'll work with it. But sound has got to be front and center because if mm-hmm. it's not front and center, it doesn't sound good. Right. So I'm like, and then that's a reflection of me, which also is now a reflection on the planner. Yeah. So right. I've tried to explain that over the course of time. Um, I, our preference is always, like you said, I don't have to be front and center, but at least put me nearby <laughs> Yeah. Like if I can't see So it, in a so square it. ballroom. Don't replace yeah. him with a charcuterie board. Yeah. Oh, my. oh no. Charcuterie Literally. board and a Literally. cake. There was a square dance uh, floor. That cake had better been seventeen tiers nope. tall and plated nope. again. Oh, no. I will show you a, a picture. Gotcha. It was at Land. the bishop. You've been at the bishop. Mm-hmm. And ideally you'd like to be set up right in that center area. Yep. Um yeah, right well, on the top, like opposite. the little Yeah, exactly. Yeah, That's yeah, like a natural stage. Right. Okay, so uh we were the DJ was placed in like a corner where there now, were pillars. Wait, now, where the to pump, the far the left. Station is? No, he, you guys left. weren't down by the wooden door. And the, I was you, by no, the it was door. by the no, entrance. By the entrance. Like, like, you know how you walk in? Yeah. And then you go to the, the right. Uh huh. Um, like, and you go, it like leads you downstairs. It's like right before you get into that center area. Like, there's like a little entrance into the. Where the bar normally is? Too? No, that other side. Like oh, literally that's by the weird right, put us like in a corner, like right by the front. But so we had so they're the behind the pillars, so you we're know where behind the, stairs, the pillars, yes, the stairs and the ramp. Yeah. They yes. were right behind. We were right there. Basically, the, board the breezeway to was to his right. Oh no! So oh my so gosh, that's awful. We had to we uh, we so my DJ placed speakers again on either side. Yeah. So the speaker align or um yeah it was whoops. <laughs> um, he was it, excited. Yeah, it was like the speakers weren't coming from one area. There was on either side of that center area. Yeah. Guess what was right in the middle? The cake. A cake. And it wasn't like. And it wasn't a big cake. It was like. And there was nothing behind it. It must have been like Plain. a Ron, cakes by Ron or Julie Defense. No, cake. I, uh, yeah. no. It I was. I mean, so. even if it was, yep. there's a much better place for that. I think. Anyway, I put it on the so, Insta. What? 
I forget who the cake was. I'll have to. Find I, I don't know, but but the DJ <laughs> was stuck in a corner. <laughs> we were stuck in a corner behind a pillar, behind a pillar, and uh, during intros, of course, like you oh. know, the, the bridal party was going by, and I don't Down know if you saw stairs. my video about the uh, the uh, bridesmaid trying to. What do they call that? Sh- um, there's a certain like word. Like pop for the it. champagne bottle with, with the, a oh knife. Yeah. With the knife. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, well, yeah. she the destroyed. Saber. She um. It's the whole thing exploded and she onto did it a speaker. twice oh, no. before she could get it going. Yep. And the guy like walking with her was like, yeah, like yep. he was ducking beside the her, champagne like, bottle exploded. Did she have a knife or did she have no, a, a knife? Saber, it was like a knife. A, oh, no. saber. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, That's what you call Lord. sabering. Yeah. But no, it was not. It was she was not a pro. Okay, like this is it. like it I've never done this before. Right. And she smashed the whole entire champagne bottle. Yeah. So. All right. So his gear on his gear. Yeah, it was a whole thing. Yeah. Um, luckily, nothing was destroyed or damaged or anything. So, um, lucky Side for them. Alcohol bath. And I, from, from what speaker, I understand, you'll be perfect after that. So, you give it an alcohol bath. Great. Right. Yeah. 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 We the get a lot of crap stuff over here. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I talked to them. Yeah. I was like, did the planner know this was happening? She had no clue no. it was going to happen. No. So, Surprise. all right. Surprise. So, layout, floor plan. Yep. You you get you see the the floor plan. It's a square ballroom. Yep. Okay. <laughs> how how would you um, ideally like to be set up? And a center of the square on one side would be across from typically the couple right on the dance floor okay. would be and then the yeah. other two sides are tables there all right easy yeah. why planners. do planners not planners. understand this listen 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 bars listen. in the corner listen right? to them. Bars no in the corner right dj yeah. in the middle yeah. so That's why would so i've had bars set up right in the middle of the dance floor no. oh yeah take and That's so i'm in the corner photo. Was that? Really, it's a great photo. Unless yeah. it's a really pretty bar. Mm-hmm. It's, mm, probably not. The uh, bar. Pretty, I've had a charcuterie board take my spot. That's not fair. Cake. Um, cake. You should sit up on a charcuterie board. <laughs> <laughs> I should have just put my stuff right on exactly. top of it. Nobody put drinks on it because there's already food there. That's a good point. That's just funny. You should have set up the right night. behind the charcuterie board so every time somebody came to. No, I will food, say since I'm kind of cheesy getting. Hey, you should. I mean, you won't be hungry. That's true. So I guess like I mean ever since I've started my rant on this um i have been making sure like i reach out to the planners and the couples and saying hey can you send me the floor plan so i can see where things are and then i'll and i will make suggestions hey can i be more centered to the dance floor um because again like you said speaker layout and setup i mean i don't want to have everything coming from one little corner yeah. which yeah. i don't know if you've been at baker's have you been at baker's you, yeah well actually we i helped uh, i helped boris design like the original sound and lighting in that place which they did not use anymore. I was gonna say uh, they don't have. No, we didn't. It ended up not using sound, and then the it was it was a thing. We we were testing in there a lot. That's why all the we have all like the foam, like the sound deadening stuff up top. There's nothing up there. There and used, there used the to white, be foam the, 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 oh, tan, pa- the yeah. tan panels used the to be. The whole idea they're not they weren't supposed to be visible. <laughs> but yeah, because it was a nightmare. Yeah, there used there, to be panels. Like echo chamber. It still oh, is. Oh no. It's still like the I acoustics the, there. Oh. Last time I was there, it, Ala was still in charge of the cake company. Oh. Yeah, it's just been a hot it's minute. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah, so the acoustic, I mean, again, Baker's Ranch is beautiful. Yeah. Um, and everything, like, you just go there, everything's ca- taken care of because yep. it's all-inclusive. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, but the acoustics, the one thing that I have an issue with is the acoustics. Yeah. Um, it's so, it just, everything's bouncing off the walls. Well, they had the and panels. I don't know what, why they don't you have You gotta them. use a column array speaker there or something small, like an Evolve Yeah, 50, I mean, I use like, Evolves. Yeah. And it's still, yeah, it's, still, yeah. it's, yeah, it's brutal. Um. And of course, like for a DJ, there's really no good spot to set up. You, need, you always you put need you a by the maximizer. bathroom. You need oh. like a drive rack system out there. It's that I'll talk uh, if Boris is Boris still running it. I don't even know if he's Alex. Alex, and that's Alex something they should have in house that they should basically let the DJ plug into. It's like like a Sonos or a Bose system. Like yeah. you set up your surround sound, it does the same thing for a DJ. No, they don't have oh. that. Yeah, no. they should no, absolutely. Because we have were that. there, like we've yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. All the anyway, choice. Yeah. But yeah. So, um, but this is initially only one place you can go there because that roof comes down and then it goes like short. No, roof. Under the balcony is where yeah. they stick the DJ. They still do Which that. is right by the bathroom. No, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So they put you in a couple different places. They stick you in the corner by the <laughs> bridal suite, or they stick you underneath the balcony. Which again, you're like, yeah, very condensed. Yeah. Very condensed. Or on the other side, where the head table is, usually they'll have you to the left of the head table in the corner. Um, or on up. the balcony. The, uh, no, I I refuse to go up I to the balcony. I just put my speakers up there. When I was there, I, was <laughs> like, I just, just put them right on the floor of the balcony. And it's like, and we're done. Oh yeah, no, yeah. I mean uh, that, but I mean <laughs> having to lug everything oh, up there, course, up the yeah. stairs, yeah. Nope. and again now it's like okay, well now I got to go downstairs, hand them the mic, and like it, there's a lot of just throw it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, but 
Um, you don't catch it, you buy yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Um, yeah. So that's that's my rant again. No, I get it, man. Nope. I'm with you 100%. Um, there's a company called Meyer Sound that has a software program called Map M A P P 3D, and you can actually put your speakers in in the floor plan that you're working in, and it'll show you visually like how the sounds going oh, okay. to space huh. that has been huge to work with planners on, especially when I get that diagram, especially when like, you show it to them and be like, hmm. this is not going to work with 300 people. Right. And you want me here and you want my speakers right next to me. And I am in a corner. Right. And I'm yeah. like, great. So half the room is not going to hear a single thing mm -hmm. that happens during toasts. And yeah. they're like, you know, Oh, well, <laughs> well, <laughs> well, exactly. Well, like, do you feel like there's a new breed of planners though out there that are yes. just, okay. Well, th there's a cycle. There, I feel like yeah. there's, there, we're, we're, I feel like we're right in the middle of that planner cycle. Cause there's like, there's like the luxury planners in the area, um, that they're, they're still killing it. And then there's like the, the last 10 years, like all the come ups, they're starting to get into that. And then I'm seeing this new wave of planners. Who, who were like assistants and things of that. Or they just saw weddings on TikTok. <laughs> right. And, and it, <laughs> I can do that. They, like, so luckily, I'm not in a, I'm, I'm not working with them specifically, but my team is at Tampa Bay DJ Company. And we're, we're having a lot of pushback and we're having to find ways to be like very respectful, but also being like, we've got to put our foot down. Right. Like, because the thing is, is that those, that, that breed of planner doesn't care about my contract. They don't oh care. God. And it, so it's like, you know, we, we put these things in our contract to make sure that we can do our job efficiently. Oh, right. And it's like, it's not me trying to be a prima donna. <laughs> it's me going, I need this much power. Like I had a planner go, why do you need 110 volts or 120 volt 20? I don't even know what that means. I'm like, it says designated circuit. It just means that catering can't be on this. Right, exactly. Yeah. Because if they turn a heat lamp on, we're going to lose the power. And, and here's the thing. They don't understand. It's as easy like, as saying, hey, venue, <laughs> right. um, DJ needs this. Yeah. Do you have it? Like, it's a conversation. It's not even like you have to figure it out. No. Per, um, you don't have to go around to the outlets. Damn it, I don't even know what, but I don't know who's plugged into what. But I expect That's the you going to into know. the venue right. and you saying, as a hey. venue owner should know mm -hmm. that. Yeah, and I would go to the venue owner and I would say, okay, so the DJ needs X, Y, and Z. Do you have that? Where is that located? Can you send me a map of all the ones that are located in that? Because he might not go to the, just that one. Or label them. And just know. Yeah, just put a damn sticker on the outlet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Circuit but if, one, but outlet for three. Floor plan right. Set up okay. ahead of time. I would want to know ahead of time where those are so I can make the best floor plan nope. for you to be that's in the right spot. Going to a site visit this afternoon to this, that, that exact thing. I'm, I mean, and that's it's it's part of what goes into our, our client research, our development, that's or whatever crazy. you want to call it. Like, but. Now, for most venues, if it's a place I haven't been before, we always schedule a site visit. Oh, 100%. And I, and I bring my little electric tool back, and I start plugging in and yep. wanding it out, trying to figure out which ones are connected, and then yep. I make a note. And and the other thing, uh, going back to the floor plan thing that you just mentioned with, with planners is, uh, you know, I asked them, like, why, why do you have us in a corner? Oh, well, because why do you, like, we don't want, it's an eyesore for you to be DJ center. DJ Furniture. Come on well, now. right. But again, like, I feel like they are working with shitty DJs. That's honestly, or, yeah. And so, but my question to them is, well, would you put a band in a corner? No. Ooh, I like that. I'm going to steal that. I'm going to borrow it. Take it. That's a, I'm, I <laughs> like, lay up for you. you. Take yeah. it with you. I'm going to lay yeah. it up right now. I Go like ahead. that. Would you, would you put a band, band in a corner? In a corner? Yeah. Hell, no. Hell no. I don't care if it's a one-piece band yeah, right. <laughs> or a five, ten-piece band. Even the violinist band. doesn't get put in a no, corner. No, well. Sometimes. No, because they want, you want everybody to see the violinist. <laughs> That's true. That's they a good wonder, point. But so. they're like, well, you're just one person. But um, so? You know, we still need to engage the with the guests exactly. and we need to read the crowd and we need to have like ample amount of room for sound. That sets the tone. Mm -hmm. If you put the DJ in the corner, you're telling your guests and you're telling the DJ. I don't care about the DJ. You're not a priority. Right. And that the overall vibe of what was mm -hmm. what you need for that night and to make it good is, is not the a cake. priority. <laughs> it's the cake it, it, or the yeah. charcuterie board. <laughs> exactly. And then what does that say? In another step that you don't care about the guest experience at the end of the Bingo. day. So if you don't care about the guest experience, it backtracks to you just don't care to be a good planner. Yep. And then everyone hates planners. Them. We love you, planners. We do. Uh, help but just like, yeah, help, help us, us help you. Yep. Help us we help you help your clients. We, we do love the planners. We love all planners. Planners make 99% of the time make my job a whole lot easier. Yes. Now like this weekend. Timeline, oh, God. This I weekend. That's so much. <laughs> This I weekend, two days before, I'm like, still thank you. Yeah, but yeah. No. This past weekend, I I was at Lakewood Ranch. Oh, I saw the beautiful setup. You put. It oh on yes, the, the yeah, the ceremony was inside, yeah, which is really was cool. Great. Not not very common. It's usually out on the 
the um, the lawn. The lawn. Thank you. Uh, but the ceremony was inside, which was really cool. And uh, the couple was supposed to have like during cocktail hour. The uh, groom is a uh, helicopter pilot. So they were supposed to have a helicopter come in and they were going to go for a flight for like 30 minutes or 15 minutes oh. during cocktail hour. It started pouring, so that was canceled. But, oh, no. yeah, that was um, like, get bummer. me an umbrella. I'm getting on the helicopter. But the oh. planners, apparently, I don't, um, apparently, <laughs> um, supposedly, they uh, had just gotten married. Now, this is probably way off, but I'm just going to go off of what I heard. Um, <laughs> That's all you <laughs> the, got. The planners were, um, they had just got married. They're like, oh, we just planned our wedding. We can do this. And they became wedding planners. Those are the ones I'm talking about. And so let me tell you, it's, it's uh, the ceremony is supposed to start at 515. And so usually, you know, 30 minutes prior, guests will start arriving yeah. and they'll come in and sit down and do their thing. Um, so they had everything closed off. It's. 450 and we're looking at the planners they're just like talking to themselves and like looking at things and so the coordinator at the venue and i were talking because we work very well together and we're like should we go talk to them be like <laughs> should we open the doors like you guys are running this thing like you saw how green they and were she, when they walked in yeah probably. and she was like they're like oh yeah we can open up the doors it's time for them to come in i'm like okay so like i so oh, i was gonna wait for them to open the doors because, well, that's, you know, and, and they weren't that's, doing anything. That's the move, though. I think you, there's a certain level of respect. you got to let them do their thing until yeah. you see that it's going to start backing things right. up. Right. And so, because so that's what, yeah, that's what the coordinator was like. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to let them do their thing because this is their, they yeah. they are the coordinators. Yeah. There uh, might or be the, a reason the wedding why planners. They're, they're delaying a few minutes. Or Th whatever. There wasn't. Yeah. They just no. forgot. Exactly. And so I didn't see them opening the doors. I'm like, fine. So I just opened the doors. TikTok. Probably. <laughs> they're trying to be like, all right, how does, no. Yeah. <laughs> Transitional <laughs> What's video. next? Yep. Like, woo. Before yeah. and after. Um, but yeah, it was, they, uh, it really became myself. It, it was me, Carlos, and then the uh, coordinators at uh, Lakewood Ranch. Yeah. And we were kind of running it as they're like they were our, the yeah. Bopsy twins just hung yeah. out. No, nope. yeah, and it was um, better, side sure. note, Carlos. It was uh, my His last, last one. Well, he has one more with me, um, but it was my last one with him. Like he and I did it together, Aww. and it was a very sad day. So Carlos is uh, one of my lead DJs. He's been absolutely amazing. He's been awesome to work with. Such a hard worker. Such a great DJ MC. Um, bilingual, nice. like everything that you could ask for. He's so cool, calm, and he's collected. cool, calm, collected. Yeah. And uh, he's been with me for the past two years, and he's leaving. Yep. He's uh, moving to Maryland. So I lost my my guy Chris this week. He's moving back to Jersey. Same so day. what is going on? So I was like, you know, and he was like, you know, I'm really gonna miss working with you. You make things so easy, and you know, easy to follow, and you know, makes my, you know, he's like, I make you make my job much more enjoyable doing this. And I was like, well, let's take TLS up to Maryland. There you go. Yeah. So he's going to. We're gonna. We're slow. I've already. I got one booked already up there. Nice. So we're slowly nice. going to be pushing into the DMV region. So yeah, Maryland, Washington D.C., and Northern Virginia. Congratulations. Fun. Yeah. Thanks. So um, I have a feeling Tim's gonna make me start planning. Yep. I'm telling you, it should be TLS and Brandy. It's it. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't really flow. TLSB. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> Get a marketing department here. We'll He's figure like, it out. It doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. Just start hanging out and doing planning. Yeah. That's it. I got my weekends back. Uh, I'm telling you, For we now. should do For it. Now. For right. now. Yep. Till that venue <sighs> pops off, huh, Corey? So, oh, man. Yep. Are we segueing? We can. <laughs> yep. We're going we're gonna, to uh, close this up soon. But yeah, let's. Uh, well, you've got some exciting news. Yeah. Uh, so, all right. So, all right. Going back. <laughs> yeah. DJ, you've yeah. got the uh, got special effects. You've got you've Cafe La Carte. You've got Cafe La Carte. Carte. Gelato Cart. We also have Tampa Bay staging and events. I'm a partner there. Jeez, Louise, you've got like a million DJs. Stuff. Yeah, we've got like, we've got 12. We have 12. We have like our seven, eight core guys. And then sure. we have like yep. another five that we bring in that are on That's the fair. way up. Right Now, of those seven and eight, how yeah. many weddings are you booked like on, a, on average every weekend, like on a Saturday? They, they work easily every Saturday and then half of them probably split Fridays and Sundays. Okay. Yeah. We try not to take weekdays, usually more AV stuff. So. And are you doing, are you doing any advertising or just strictly just word of mouth? All with, word of mouth. And we're, networking. We're gonna, yeah. And we really, I kind of fell off the networking wagon for about a year too. I'm like, we stayed part of Swell because I love the organization and Jordan. Um, a lot of respect for what he's built there as a privately owned entity. I think he's engaged a lot more than a lot of like the volunteer board type networking mm -hmm. groups are. Uh -huh. So um, I'm a big fan of Jordan. Shout out to him. 
um, and the whole swell group. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, we, we're, we're ramping it back up now just because we've, we've been watching our sales and we have sales forecasts and you know, that the 2001, 2002 bubble after COVID is flattening the curves flattening out. So 2021. Know, yeah. So we're, we're going to, we, we know we need to start advertising again to kind of just get back into the groove. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're rocking right now. We've been really happy, but the production side of it has been a big help. People yeah. love the special effects. So yeah, you've got all the effects. You've got the AV. Yep. Um, you do lighting. Yep. We do a ton of lighting. Jeez. Shout out to Astera. Oh my God, man. That they've like the theatrical lighting stuff has changed the game for us. Like the pixel tubes and all these yeah. things. Lighting. What? Um, Oh yeah. Oh, I'll show it's you. An, more it, toys. Oh yeah. boy. And yeah. now. Oh boy. Here we go. Yep. And and diversifying. Diversifying, <laughs> and you're gonna have your own wedding venue. Yeah. So we, I've, um, I've got a partner, uh, my buddy Chris, who's got 12 acres over in Lithia, um, right off of 39, basically 45 minutes from anywhere, from everything from uh, Lakewood Ranch to like heart of Tampa, right off the interstate. Um, so we're, we're going to do, uh, basically like an eight acre actual working tree farm. Um, and then, uh, and then we're going to put on, uh, it backs up to a preserve in Brandon, um, 6,000 acres. It's absolutely gorgeous. So we're, we're in the process of clearing our land right now. We have our first couple hundred trees, I think actually being delivered today Oh wow! Uh, down there. So that's going on. And then, yeah, we're, we're in the permitting and, and everything. I mean, we've already sketched everything out. We've got a, about an 8,000 square foot building that we're going to put in. We're going to drop a groom suite out there separate nice. of the building, um, dedicated ceremony space to two different looks like an oak canopy versus a preserve look. Um, and he's, he's putting in all sound. Um, so it's going to be plug and play for it's DJs. It's going to be plug and play. Now are you just going to have just broke ground on Wednesday? Yeah. Right. <laughs> and oh my God. so are you going to have specifically like Tampa Bay DJ company? It'll be offered. It? I, I, I'm from the standpoint of there's, there's a DJ for everybody and there that, that may not be on my team. Yeah. So, and I'm like, and there's, there's a good talent pool. Like obviously TLS being nearby. Um, I've got my friends out in Lakeland, Grand Entertainment, Chris's mm -hmm. company out there. Um, like there, there's a good talent pool. And my thing is like, there's a lot of weekends that we're booked out. And while it would be good to be like, Hey, like we're the all inclusive here. It may not be the best fit for everybody or yeah. people want bands, live music, whatever yeah. the case is. So we're, we're not going to pull an exclusivity card there. We're going to push it. I, you know, of course I, got this. I would do the but same. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But, but my, my goal with this was to have that, that next step down the road, because unfortunately DJs have shelf lives. Like mm -hmm. we, we will only He's talking longevity talk and residual. Longevity. That's it. I was going to say, because yeah. like now putting your, your hands into this now, yep. When are you gonna have time to DJ? I'm raising my prices. Of course, and, no, and I then, get that. Yeah, and then there's there's gonna be there's definitely a specific clientele that I work really well with, and a mm -hmm. specific type of planner I work really well with. So I'm staying on that. The nice thing with the venue is is I'm coming in um, because there, I have a landowner out there, right? So my business partner Chris owns the land, and he will essentially own the venue. I'm doing a 15 year contract with them, but I I am the the only consultant for this. Sure. So this is my baby, my project. My job is to make both of us a ton of money and get a lot of happy clients. Yeah. So, so we're we're you putting a planner. For I'm sure we will. I'm not going to pull you. Away. Your your <laughs> current your current spot at the retreat is amazing. Thanks. I'm like the good that that place does as a whole, and then what that's going to do for couples is great. And I mean, I was out there taking notes. I was looking at the buildings, going, "Oh, I'm going to use this building material. This looks pretty <laughs> right. great." Here. So like, <laughs> the acoustics I, were really good too. I hadn't were heard fantastic. anything. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah so I hadn't like, heard no. anything in the space yet until Wednesday, and I was like. Okay, this, this is works. Good. Yeah. yeah, no, so it's it's good, and it's um. That's so exciting. My brain doesn't turn off. I think it's kind of Yay! like. Yay! <laughs> <You're lucky>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it's just you know, if, I, if I'm like, my wife will get mad at me. We'll be at a restaurant somewhere, and she's like, "Why is your phone out?" And I'm like, "I'm not on Instagram or something. I'm shazamming. Like, Shaz yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm taking pictures of like the way this light works at this specific mm -hmm. space because I'm like, I'm gonna work this into a venue. Yeah. Or I'm gonna work this into something. So, um. Yeah, you know, that's been it's been kind of a culmination of years of that, and mm -hmm. then finally having an opportunity. When I went out and walked the property for the first time, um, I had just got my pickup truck, right? So yep. I'm four wheel drive, and I'm just having fun. And I, 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 I just I had turned um, through this oak, these two huge oak trees, and uh, where the name of the venue is going to be Crooked Pine, because when you get out there, there's just one single pine tree. And it spirals like a corkscrew all the way to the top. It's the coolest looking pond I've ever seen. That's cool. Um, that it was awesome. it was Chris's idea. And like when they were clearing the land the first time around, he left that tree because he thought it was so cool. And when we got out there, it's like, oh, this is perfect. Like Good it's pine. got a story to it. I so, love that. Yeah, it's gonna be really neat. It's a it's a cool venture. It's gonna be, you know, 
eight months to a year of just some solid hard work, but we have a really good team. We've got guys okay. that understand their role that come in and help us clear the land and help us get the tree farm going. And then get and the I love that you're doing the tree farm and conservation yeah. in addition to Big that. Time. Yeah. Like it's not just like, hey, we're just going to clear out all this land and no. take over and build something. Exactly. You know, you're still adding back to what you're taking away from the world and the earth. And I'm Exactly. Sure that was. We're going to keep as many back. oaks as we can out there. There's some that have some issues that we've already had an arborist come out and go, hey, like, these are going to kill all the surrounding trees, so let's go ahead and pull that out. But then we said, yeah, we're going to put 2,000 trees back in the dirt. They're like, okay, oh. cool. Yeah, do what you <laughs> do. You're yeah, good. So, yeah, that is awesome. Yeah. So that's going to be neat. It's going to be a lot of fun. So that means couples can come out and get a tree. So that's actually – so part of our plan right now is um, when we were when we were good. getting ready to start clearing is we started collecting seedlings. We've been doing it for like three, four weeks now. And so um, our first couple, will, like right, as, as many seedlings as we have, those we'll give those out to couples. And then as we get more seedlings coming in off the tree farm – Every couple will get like a love tree and they can do like a planning ceremony during that. Like if they want to, you know, add their soil and add their water during the wedding ceremony, stuff like that. We're, we're trying to tie, tie stuff I've to it. I've got chills and Same tears. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. great. I love that. <laughs> something different, something unique. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's really cool. Oh, yeah. When okay. are you going to start booking? <laughs> right. Right. Jeez. I will, as, as soon as I get my C, uh, my, my occupancy license, I get my own yeah. C, we're good to go. So. You have to be, have a big open house for just uh, industry people. We're going to have multiple. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're gonna that's going to be really yeah, cool. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited later. for you, man. That's awesome. awesome. Holy so cow. Long, like, like I said, brain doesn't turn off. It's 35. So. Yep, not it's yet. just Gosh. four more days. Okay, sorry. Easy. <laughs> Actually, your 30s are great and so are the 40s, just so you know. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I thought you were 27. How do you know I mean, I just know people that know. You just yeah, know. Okay. I just it. know. Yeah. I've asked a lot of questions. <laughs> oh man. So are you uh are you busy? I mean, are you guys always when well, yes, that's fair. Um, <laughs> uh, yes, are our yes, weddings yes. starting to slow down now that we're kind of coming out of season? Oh, thank or? God. Yeah. The May twenty eighth that weekend is just like I can oh, I can Labor see Day the weekend. light at the end of the tunnel right now. So I've do you got, have any in June or I base so I try to take off one solid month, if I can, during the you summertime. You personally or the, personally. Or the entire? Yeah, no, the, the operation runs. It yeah. just keeps going. But, yeah, no, the, the team will go. Um, we, we usually slow down pretty good in June. I try and give everybody on the team a break in July. It's mm -hmm. just it's super hot, and it's hurricane season. I will say it's, July and August are typically, like, the two months that I see that we yeah. will have very sporadic. Very, yes, exactly. It's really not much going on. No. Yeah. I'll DJ one, maybe two times a month. Um, at that point, we're basically doing more, more of the um, – AV, special effects, things like that on the one-offs. and then Getting the, reset for getting, season. Getting reset. We usually yep. host our training. We do an in-person training um, at the end of every summer so that we kind of gear up and plan towards that too because we do one full day photo shoot and – just tons of information. Like, here's what's trending. Here's what's new. Here's where we're at sales-wise. Here's, here's what we need to hammer back into the team to make sure yeah. that like, this is where we missed this time of the year. So we're going to we're gonna make sure. it up where we're going to kill it in this, it these areas. And a good team. We try to give a bonding experience. Because that was like. I have a great place you can do that. Oh, you know what? I, I, th I heard about this place. Maybe. Saratoga. Some kind of a retreat. Just maybe. Because yeah, yep. <laughs> you imagine the dance parties that are going to take place? I'd be like, the only requirement is that we have a dance party every night. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. That's it. I love uh, it. So. That is really cool. cool. I love how you are, um, one, to be in the industry 20 years and still setting the bar higher and still moving up and still progressing and setting that, you know, lengthy goal down the road where things are going to be. And I just yep. love that you are bringing so many people along with you and you're so open to Thank share you. like what you're doing and how you're doing it. And here, let me, like you're just telling, let me, I'll tell you afterwards. I yeah. got this for you. I got this for you. I got that <laughs> for you. And I just love that you are so, you've always been that way. And I think that's, that's one of the things that we don't find in the nope. industry as much as we should. Our, I mean, our warehouse I see and the motto is Tim, everybody up. So like that's and that was just kind of our quick way of saying like we want to help everybody rise to that yeah. next level and it's like it doesn't i'm not in this for competition like yeah. i when i like guys like tim like they're rare to find djs who are they good are. at what they do and then care and then will teach well and there have been times where we like, both have like call each other one week and like hey we yep. last minute I, are you able to dj today because yep. one of my guys is you know something happened yep. and yeah. pop up clients yeah like whatever the case might be yep. so I'm like, I mean, that's, that's happened for both of us where he's yep. called me i've called him and yep. um i mean it's just been a great uh like kind of like a partnership i mean yep. i um i've again like i said before i've been it's been amazing to watch your journey just from when i started you know seeing you and when you kind of uh expanded for from grant hemond yep um, and I watch all your stuff and yep. am very, uh, well, thank you. Yeah. Are you fan girl? I'm a, I'm a huge fan. <laughs> I love it. 
I'm a huge high five. <laughs> Cross Huge table, fan. Yeah. Broskies. So uh, for our couples, how can they get a hold of you? Oh, man. Um, website, Instagram. Those are probably the two most. Uh, What's yeah. your website? Uh, so uh, TampaBayDJCompany.com or for me personally, DJ Corey Barron, no E and Corey, two R's and Barron. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we're everything filters right to our, to our contact pages. Yep. So that's the easiest way to do it. I, I'm, I'm usually on the go at least the first part of the week, just nonstop. So the girls in my office, Miriam and Dawn, thank you so much. Like they shout out, shout out to them. And then Ivan in my warehouse, who's my right hand man. Like he's like, he's shout out. right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Instagram. How can they yeah. get a hold of you? Uh, DJ Corey Barron on Instagram. Um, and then Tampa Bay, I think it's TB DJ co on, uh, on Instagram yep. as well. Yeah. If they uh, call us. That's, Facebook. Same thing. Probably. He's like, <laughs> I don't do Facebook. I don't yeah. so I'm I on there, have but for Marketplace, I don't really know how else the Facebook works. <laughs> are you on, are you on TikTok? You on My talker? office can probably answer that question <laughs> for you. So, so yeah. I only have one more thing for you. So there was a time you were supposed to guest DJ for me. Uh-oh. I know. I feel right? like this was like your birthday party, or is <gasps> yes, it a Christmas party? It's my birthday. It's your birthday. So mm -hmm. we're going to have to connect. See, we intentionally didn't do that because you'd have to throw another party. There you go. Nice mm -hmm. save. See, that's, yeah. that's it. We're there might always, be one in a few years. Always thinking down the yeah. road. That's Just it. know, <laughs> I'm going to be calling and be like, <laughs> okay, it's time. Remember time that Benoit party? That's it. That's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I always have Tim. Maybe we'll do it at my venue. Right? Hey. So that could be it. And then Tim could be like an actual guest because I always have him work when I have parties. That's fine. <laughs> Just bring your thumb drive. We'll guest watch we'll <laughs> you. You guys can like, oh, DJ battle. Not a DJ yeah. battle. It'll just DJs. be yeah. a mix battle. Yeah, yeah, I would love to. I would love to throw like my something that I would love to do is um, like rent out like the Sarasota Municipal Auditorium right here. Yeah, and do like a huge, just a big party, and because. have Anna from Miramie Tampa Bay. If you're listening, we've been talking about this for like two years. Yeah, so, like, and just have industry radio. on the stage. Just have like yeah. five DJ setups. Mm -hmm. Yes, and. Each one can go at like every thirty minutes can change and it's Perfect. just like everybody's going and just like I'll highlight bring the silent disco stuff out. Can we do a holiday do party like something? I would love to do one. I would like love that to. That would be so much fun. Yeah. I, yeah. Sell tickets. Let's do it. That would be sweet. Let's can talk. we do oh, CO twos and confetti? We'll please. do. It. We'll bring out all of the things. We okay, if all we the don't things. go to the Ritz Carlton, we can do whatever we want. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to the Ritz. There we yep. go. <laughs> Yep. All right. This has been awesome. Corey, thank you so much for joining us. Dude, thanks for having me on. Brandy, guys. I'm so glad you could eventually join us. Hey, <laughs> duty calls as a mother. Yep. Yep. Happy you know. Mother's Day, by the way. Thank That's you. right. Happy Mother's Day. Thanks. Um, Tim Schaus, TLS Entertainment, your premier DJ. You've got Corey Barron with Tampa Bay DJ Company. Uh, Brandy Harlan, your non retired wedding planner. This is the Scoop Weddings Unveiled. Peace and chicken grease.